Welcome to Heaven's Kitchen. Hi, I'm Janelle and I'm so glad you could be with me. Once again, I have the blessing of the BCAM crew with even a new member today, so I'm really excited. I've been inspired pretty much all week by my band. Uh, if you're a Wahlburgers fan, then I think you know Johnny Drama. And uh, I happen to be a proud member of Johnny Drama's Funky Entourage. So I've been working on recipes for the guys because when we rehearse, we rehearse long, long days. And uh, I came up with some really cool things that I want to show you today. So before I start rapping and talking to you, I'm going to get Martha preheated because we're going to do a beautiful dessert first and then I'm going to show you how we put together some spectacular comfort food to keep the band fed while we work. So we're going to preheat. Martha needs to be at 350. Okay. This is a recipe uh, inspired by a beautiful Texan. Her name is Bernadine. And her daughter happens to be Johnny's beautiful wife, Lisa. And one night we were working away in the lab and Lisa came in with these apple dumplings. Uh, her daughter, Emily, helped her make them. When I tell you to die for, I am not exaggerating. So let's go through the ingredient list. And as you know, as I talk through everything, if you ever want to see it, shoot me an email, what have you, and I'll give you all the, uh, the recipes that you want. So first things first. Generally, when you do this, you're going to do it on a bigger scale. I'm doing it in a small scale because I've got a crew of three today plus myself, and I don't want to be eating these things all week long. So I'm going to just use one can of crescent rolls when I make it. So apple dumplings made with crescent rolls, and believe it or not, a bottle of Sprite. I know it sounds weird, but trust me, it works. So let's get started right away, okay? First thing I want to do is I'm going to set up everything for my sauce. The concept here is we're going to assemble these crescents with beautiful Granny Smith apple in them. And using Granny Smith, I think, is best because it's got a tartness to it, so it really works with that sweet, decadent caramel sauce that we're going to make. So I'm going to grab this pan over here so we can build the sauce. You'll get a better view, and then we'll pop it on to Martha to warm it up. So we want this beauty. And this beauty has a story as well. Uh, my friends here in Braintree. Peter and Linda Silowan had a dear friend named Mary. Uh, Mary owned these pans. These are vintage Le Creuset, so I am thrilled to have acquired them for Heaven's Kitchen, and I'm going to build this beautiful sauce with it. So what we're going to do in order to make our delicious caramel sauce is we're going to put a stick of butter, and please don't count your calories when you watch this show today, because there is all kinds of happy calories going on in this one. So a stick of butter. We need, uh, what am I doing, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. And when you're baking, I think I probably have told you this when we've baked other things, brown sugar gets packed down firmly. So you want to press into, that would be the full cup measure. You don't want to just do it like granulated sugar. You need to press it down so that you get an accurate measurement. So that's one quarter. That's two quarter, and that is three quarters. Okay. Let's seal that up. Don't ever leave your brown sugar uncovered because you know it turns hard as a rock. So we've got one stick of butter, three quarters of a cup. Now I have seen this done with white sugar, but uh, if I'm making it, I'm going all the way. Not only am I using brown, I'm using dark brown. So it's got that richness of molasses. It's going to be fantastic. OK, we need to put some vanilla. And as I've said, please never, 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 if you're baking, use imitation. Get the real deal. Makes all the difference. So we're going to do a half a teaspoon of vanilla. OK. So we just need a little half teaspoon there. Oh, and that smells absolutely incredible. I told you the vanilla story. It smells great, tastes horrible. When I was a kid, I used to beg my mother to taste it. Why, I don't know, because it's disgusting. Then we're going to take a nice full teaspoon. Again, beautiful cinnamon. I mean, if you can afford to buy good spices, do it, because they make such a difference. I mean, sometimes in a pinch, you grab them at the dollar store, but they're not going to be as good as 
the real good brands. So let's put our cinnamon in there. All right, oh boy, smells unreal. Tis the season, apples and cinnamon and all this great stuff. Now I am taking a shortcut today because I don't think the B-Cam crew would mind. Um, you would ordinarily peel an apple. We've talked about this. I don't peel apples. I don't peel potatoes. So we're not peeling, but you can if you want to. I'm going to do it quickly. So I have my handy dandy. And if you recall, one of my shows when I made the apple cake, I couldn't get this thing on straight. So hopefully I'll be better at it today. So I have this terrific little separator. And as long as you get down there, right even, and I'm going to do my best, then i got to push my whole body into it. Ta-da! Oh, see? It's not perfect, but I'm getting it. And that's a big apple, and that's why I'm having trouble. Ta-da! Okay, so that's what I need to do. So I've got eight slices, eight slices of apple for one can of crescent rolls. So let's go to the fridge, grab my crescent rolls, because when you're baking these, you can't leave these sitting out because if they get too soft and sticky, it's going to be a disaster. You're not going to be able to roll them. So we've got this ready to rumble. I'm going to put this on the stove. I want this to melt and start making our delicious caramel sauce while we assemble the crescents. So we're going to put Martha. I want it kind of a slow, slow and steady. Okay, we'll get my spatula ready. So as that begins to melt, I'll come back and stir that, okay? So here we got our apples ready to roll. Now here is the pan I want to use. If you use the double recipe, two apples, obviously double the sugars, double everything, uh, you'll use a, a 9 by 13 pan. I love this pan. I'm only making eight. It's going to fit fine. So let me show you. We're going to take our crescent rolls, and I'm going to work right here. My granite is nice and clean. I polished it last night. So we are going to open up our crescents. And are they going to pop on me? Nope, they didn't. Okay, sometimes you just open them and they pop. Sometimes they don't. So I just take a little something, a spoon or something. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Ta-da! Done. Okay, so here is my crescent dough. And it's beautiful because I kept it nice and cold. So I can work right on the granite because I promise I spent tons of time cleaning it. So it's good to go. Now, when this is chilled nicely like this, it's really easy to work with. And you're not going to believe how simple this is. And I mean, the kids are going to dig it. It tastes incredible. So here we go. We're going to take these little, I think I'll actually use a knife. We've got to cut along these perforations. We're going to make our 12 triangles, OK? And it's as simple as this. Here's my apple slice, okay? I'm gonna use the fat side first, roll it up just like a crescent, and it's not gonna cover it completely, and that's quite all right. Just like so, okay? And you're gonna, oh goodness, one more thing I don't wanna forget to tell you. You gotta grease your pan. And you know I always grease over my sink because I'm not messing up my granite. So let me just grease my pan here generously because we don't want them to stick and break, okay? Perfect, we'll leave that right there. Okay, so let's lay these babies right in. And they're just like little snuggled apples in blankets. Okay, and see how simple. Takes no time at all. Wrap, 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 place it in. If you can give them a little space, um, you know, use the right size pan so that they're not stuck together because you don't want them to bake and stick together. Okay, ta-da. We loving this or what? See how simple? Okay, here we go. I'm going to make space in the pan. There we go. Look at how simple and how adorable. Okay, let's move my dough so I can reach it. Keep going. Simple, simple, simple. Look it. Ta-da, okay, and so we have three people on the crew, so I say Jerry gets two, Wes gets two, Genevieve gets two, <laughs> and uh, maybe save one for Tommy and 
Maybe I'll get one for myself. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Could it get any easier than that? Absolutely not. Look at how cute, all laid up, looking beautiful. We gotta go over to the stove so I can start stirring my sauce. Let's see how that's do doing. Let me get my, oh yeah, it's doing it, people. Oh yeah. This is doing it. This is exactly what I want. I'm gonna get you a really good look at it, but it's doing exactly what I want. Oh yeah, I just need to kick it up a smidge because I need this butter to be melted all the way. And we're almost there, so bear with me for one second. You gotta be patient with it because you don't want it to turn into toffee or anything, but you want it to be just right, and it is almost there. So another thing about this is I've seen it done where people take this sauce and they mix it cold. and. I don't know. To me, I, I just I don't I don't like that concept. And I've seen it done where they actually put the uh, in my case I'm using Sprite. Some people use Seven Up. Um, some people do that just cold in a cup and pour it. But I I like this version much better. So we are almost there. I'm going to get you a good look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're all preheated. You heard Martha give us her. I'm ready for the apple crescents now. I call them apple crescents. I, I think they're technically called apple dumplings. All right, this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let me show you this. Perfect. All right. So we are going to just take this beautiful, beautiful sauce. I mean, can you stand how gorgeous that is? I can't wait to lick the spatula, but I won't do that until we put the camera away. <laughs> so we're gonna take that and pour it right, oh my lord, you see what I'm saying? Oh, does that look amazing or what? And I am not wasting one drop of it, not one drop. And let me tell you something, this vintage pan it's really working my biceps. It's a beauty and it is heavy. Oh, goodness gracious, that's amazing. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So here is the magic ingredient. I wanna make sure I measure this correctly because I think I only need about a cup of this. Yeah, good, I didn't want it to spit all over me. Okay, so obviously these are 20 ounces. I only need eight ounces, so. The trick of this part, once you have this beautiful setup, you don't want to interfere with these because these need to brown and bake. So we want to go kind of in and out with this and the 7-Up, the Sprite, the Mount, some people use Mountain Dew, whatever you're using is going to help create the sauce and it's just, trust me when I tell you, you're not going to believe it. So I'm very gently, very gently pouring over here. I'm trying not to actually get on my crescents. I'm just going around them, okay? And this fantastic carbonation and sweetness is going to make the most amazing sauce you have ever tasted. And I'm gonna call that enough because I don't want them to swim in it. I just want them to bake beautifully. So what did that take us? Not even five minutes? I'm gonna pop these into Martha. I'm gonna look at them in about 20 minutes. I think they're gonna be superb. So let's get them in the oven. Okay, middle rack. And once again, when you're using convection, you know I love convection. Um, it's gonna come down to 325, that's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna let those go in. We're gonna time them for 20 minutes. I'll take a look at them and we'll see what we think. But I'm telling you, in five minutes, my mouth is gonna start watering because that caramel smell and that apple smell, it's like apple pie smell, gonna be heavenly. So that quick and simple dessert is done five minutes. I'm gonna clean up the dessert and then I'm bringing on the next step. And this is a shout out to my Kayleen who's down in Oklahoma. One of her favorite things on the planet is Panera mac and cheese. And I've been really working hard to perfect it 
but I didn't think that'd be enough because we needed more calories. So I also want to introduce you to a super great ingredient that somebody got me. So I'll give you that in just a second. Let me clean up and I'll be right back. They smell incredible. I had to put everybody back on their cameras so they won't touch them. <laughs> so I'm uh, moving on to the meat and potatoes part of our, of our uh, lunch today. So I'm going to just move these out of the way because I don't think that what I have coming up next, which is habanero sauce, really blends. So I'm going to slide these over here so we have plenty of space to work. So. Yes, I said we're doing mac and cheese, which is pretty rich in and of itself, but I thought, you know what? The guys are working hard. They're going to be hungry. We need something else. So here's another quick story for you. I have a friend named Matt from Maryland who introduced me to a man named Sam. And Sam happens to be an attorney, so we talked about some legal things for a while, because I am too. But then we talked about food stuff, because he's a foodie, I'm a foodie. And lo and behold, Sam, the attorney, super intelligent investment guy, has his own hot sauce business down in Maryland. So I said, hey, if you want to send it, I'll use it. Lo and behold, my package comes yesterday. So we have Daddy's Boy's Sriracha. We have Daddy's Boy's Spicy Serrano. And we have Daddy's Boy's Habanero, and I guess he named these after his boys. Uh, I had the crew decide, because you know me, I don't do hot anything. I have no idea which one to use. So I'm going to do some chicken tenders in these beautiful sauces. We've already done chicken wings for buffalo, for uh, buffalo wings for a Patriots game, so you know how to do that. This is going to be just a quick little shortcut, have a nice little something to go with the mac and cheese. So we've got Chicken tenders, simple as can be. I've laid them out like I usually do on a rack because I want them to, to bake nicely. Um, we need to go back to the oven real quick because I only had it at 350. For our chicken, I want it up higher to 400. So let's do that really quick. Let's go up to 400. Perfect, okay, so. We're going to spice up this chicken. What do I always use? Always, always, always. Ooh, that doesn't have a sprinkler. That would be dangerous. Onion powder, garlic powder. Just because I think, you know, a hot, crazy sauce might not be enough. <laughs> what would I know? I've never had it. OK, and that's the thing. I promised my friend Sam that if I was going to cook with it, I would try it. But he advised me to have a glass of milk ready. So I'm going to take that advice.